there's not much doubt, classic tractor fever is still burning hot. And one of the reasons is a lot of folks collect the tractor Dad had. And in this case, Delwyn Van Zani from Otley, Iowa, you collected the tractor Granddad had. Granddad. My granddad purchased this in 1920. It's slightly used. And it's been on our family farm uh, ever since. Uh, so it's been on the family farm for 97 years. And we have a century farm. So we're really proud to still own this tractor because there's been people that have tried to buy this thing over the years. Luckily, Dad wouldn't sell, so now we have a real treasurer. Priceless family heirloom as far as we're concerned. So it started with Granddad, passed down to Dad, and now to you. Tell us uh, the year, the make, the model of the tractor. It's a 1918, and it's a 918 cross motor, and it, that is the very smallest cross motor that Case made in their line of about 13 models. So when you say cross motor, what does that mean? That means that the engine lays crossways across the frame. So you crank it on the end of the crankshaft and the belt pulleys on the other end of the crankshaft. Uh, a lot of tractor makers back in the early 1900s built tractors that way because they didn't have the bevel gears to do the rear ends, so they had an inline gearing that way. Now you farmed a lot with a lot of different tractors. What do you think of that cross motor design? What are some of the pluses and minuses? Well, I just, as praying it and, and running it around, I, it, it would be driving a pair of horses, but it would give a guy a challenge in the day. It would be fairly warm to run because of the side paddles on the engine. I know my dad commented about that at, at a time that it was pretty hot. But generally speaking, this thing drives pretty nice. And if you're out in the softer dirt, which out in the field where you can most of the time, it rides pretty nice. So did Case build these engines then, and how much power did they have? This particular engine, yeah, is a Case-built engine. It's a four-cylinder. It's got a three and seven-eighths bore with a five-inch stroke. The Nebraska test of what I read, this actually is an 18 horse that would be on the belt. And uh, in Nebraska, they had a test of about 24 horse. Their power that they rated them at was always a little under what they would actually do. Uh, they've just been known to overbuild, and I guess that's why Case Equipment is out there and still going. Yeah, a guy wouldn't complain that he didn't get all the power he wanted. That's right. It's nice to have that extra amount when you need it and so forth. So it's a big plus. So do you have any idea what your granddad had to give for this tractor back in 1920? In 1920, he gave $825. Do you know what your granddad used it for mostly? I think mostly he probably used it on the grain binder was one big thing. And my guess, he probably plowed with it. I remember you know, when I was just a boy, it stood out in the cow lot for about 40 years. And I can remember playing on it out there as a kid. How tough was it to get it back to the looks like brand new condition to me? We, you know, we farmed that out. We farmed the mechanical out to to uh, the brewbreakers and boys that were up the road about 20. And then the um, painting and sandblasting was done by Dumont of Sigurdy. He has a big Oliver collection, and he'd done the painting and stuff. But this tractor, when we decided to restore it, we decided to put new, pen, new tin on it. So what you're looking at here is all new tin. I've got the old for pattern. We felt that it was, it was a valuable enough outfit that uh, we put all new tin on. The fenders come from tired iron from Bristol, Indiana. All, the, all except the hood. That sheet metal was replaced by Dumont when he was doing the painting. The hood was replaced by uh, Lawrence and Bill and Zanny. They had a uh, manufacturing place right there in Pella. They built the hood for us, and then I had a nephew that was in the body shop. He'd done that paint to the hood. So we've had more than one person do some of the restoration. The little fuel tank, I just finished it about a year and a half ago. Somebody shot it with a rifle, you know, and then it, it just, it was, it was beyond restoration. So we just used it as a copy. And uh, other than that, you know, just a few things, like the, uh, this has it, the water wash air cleaner. Uh, we managed to uh, salvage the main shell of it. The top is a spun steel top, and that's from uh, Lefevre out of uh, Peach Bottom, Pennsylvania. We picked that up. So Delwyn, when you're in the seat of this tractor behind the wheel driving it, uh, what's the feeling? 
I'm very proud to, to have this and know that it is a family heirloom. And uh, it's just, uh, I get a little nervous running it once in a while because they can be a little temperamental, but that's all part of an old tractor. And, and I just got to relax and, and I feel very good about driving this thing, knowing that we have really got a, a cream puff here to be owned. Now your granddad gave $825 for this used back in 1920. If I doubled your money, give you $1650, could I take it home today? No, you couldn't. <laughs> Can't talk you into that. No, you couldn't. I've had some guys that uh, <laughs> had some pretty good offers already. It's, it's not for sale, actually. All right, well, thanks for sharing the story of your family tractor tradition, the Case 918, been in your family for almost 100 years. Just about. Give us a couple more years and it'll be there. All right, Delwyn Van Zani, he's holding fast to that family case machine. Thank you for catching Classic Tractor Fever. If you can't get enough case, be sure to check out these other stories. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button to keep more Classic Tractor Fever rolling.